بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السرّات المستقيم سرّات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المقدور عليهم ولا ضالين. I have recited the most oft-repeated prayer of the Muslims throughout the world. It is composed of seven verses, and these seven verses are repeated by every Muslim throughout their daily prayers at least 32 or more times. Why is it numbered? as number one chapter or surah of the Holy Quran, which in reality is not considered a chapter, but it is considered to be the very essence of the entire revelation of the Holy Quran. Because by the recital and the repetition of these ayats or these verses, we make our contact prayer. We have our direct contact with no mediators. We did not say in the name of Prophet Muhammad Ibn Abdullah. Is that right? That's right. We did not say in the name of Ibrahim, That's right. the father of Ismail and Isaac. Did we? We do not say in the name of Moses and his brother Aaron. And we did not say in the name of Jesus, son of Mary. But we said something that brings you in direct contact with the God himself. And that is a lesson. That lesson has not been learned. Yet, and so we suffer to this day the rebuke of Almighty God Allah because we have taken the prophets and the messengers and the priests and the ministers as idols of worship. And this is an affront to Almighty God Allah Himself. So the lesson that is put in the form of a prayer in the opening chapter of the Holy Quran signifies that one day we will come to the end of worshiping the flesh and blood images of one another and putting them on a pedestal that only has a transitory life, a transitory existence. How many times has Minister Louis Farrakhan come before our people and spoken against this kind of adoration or idol worship? Why? Because the lives of the prophets and the lives of the messengers and the lives of the servants of God who come before us are yet under the subjugation and the dominion of the same God that they are guiding us to worship and obey. Is that right? Yes, so they become a trial for the people. And we present problems and problems to our servants whom God has raised to take us into a new world of righteousness and peace. Look what happened in the history of Moses and the history of Aaron according to the Bible. Because of the rebelliousness of the people of Israel who have been granted such a mercy and a blessing from Almighty God Allah, He became angry with them at the waters of Meribah. Is that right? And in His getting angry with the people, He left out the name of God. Is that right? So the Holy Quran comes to cleanse us 
of these impurities and of these mistakes and of these errors if we would but listen and obey. Over every single surah of the Holy Quran, after the opening Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the Fatiha, the Mifta, the key that opens your mind and your spirit directly to God. You have Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim over every single chapter of the Holy Quran. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is actually a prayer that begins in Surah 1 and continues through 114 with the exception of one Surah. Surah 9. And Surah 9 is called the chapter of the hypocrites. Now, counting from Surah 9, we find what they call, the scholars call, the missing Bismillah, the missing prayer. The hypocrites miss their prayers, is that right? And the hypocrites miss the divine guidance of Almighty God Allah, and they miss the blessings, and they miss the opportunity to see the kingdom of God established on earth. That's right. Because the hypocrites are blind. That's right. Because the hypocrites want to deceive the righteous of Almighty God Allah. That's right. They are not content or happy with seeing righteous believers right. on their way to God. That's right. But they, like Iblis, they, like Shaitan, they, like Satan, they, like the devil, stand in the pathway right. of the progress right. of the Muslims and the nation of Islam. Right. So we, today, have an opportunity not to fail in our duty. And our duty is to worship the one God alone. But the Holy Quran says that the people begin to murmur, listen to this, and act in disobedience and act in disarray because if you mention the name Allah alone, they get afraid. Why? Because they can use the servant of God as an excuse to disobey the maker. So they say, well, if it wasn't for the servant of God, he said, do such and such, or he guided me to do this. Is that right? Yes. But Allah opened a way in the Holy Quran, the revelation of this precious scripture, over 1400 years ago, so that today we could not make one mistake. Yes, ma'am. Read in the name of thy Lord who creates. Read, and thy Lord is most generous. Who creates from a clot. Is that right? Yes. Only one man or one woman is made from a clot? Or all of us are made from the same biological union of the seed of life. Is that right? right. So every single one of us must now take hold to the responsibilities of our duties that we have neglected, whether we are Christians, Muslim, Jewish, or whatever faith that you may adhere to. And stop driving our servants into positions that they have not required of us. And then blame them when things go wrong. When something goes wrong, you have nothing but to blame yourself. Anything of good, teaches the Holy Quran, is from Allah. But anything that is in error, in deviation, is from ourselves. So we oftentimes want to make excuse. Well, 
uh, brother minister said so and so, and brother minister uh, told me to do such and such, and then you come back and you tell that lie right. to offend a true believer. And then that true believer has no defense because he can't go like you, perhaps directly to the source, pick up a phone or write a secretary or call a secretary and complain to them about their suffering because you have hid the light of Almighty God Allah. My subject for this afternoon was to be a continuation of our subject from Friday evening. Yes, the raising of the question, do you want your freedom? Yes, and I remembered saying that most of us would say unequivocally what? Yes. yes. But are we willing to pay the price? Do we know the steps to take to guarantee and to maintain that freedom once it is achieved? But if we continue along the line that some of us are going, being neglectful of our duty to guide the people to who? Me? To Minister Farquhar? To Minister Wazir, to Minister Charles, to Sister so and so, or so and so, and so and so, and so and so, until you make all these demigods. But it is to guide us directly to Almighty God Allah, and there you will have and gain your freedom. Freedom of worship. Freedom of prayer, freedom to do what it is that is in your own nature to do. Not that someone has to teach you, but someone does have to guide us upon the path of that straight path to Almighty God Allah. Because until we can begin to take the cobwebs off of our eyes and remove the rust from the rusty locks of our brain cells right. so that we can begin to be human again. Yes, right. Human beings showing and expressing love, acting in harmony and in peace right. with one another. If our freedom were declared tomorrow and we were given a state or a territory of our own in this country or elsewhere, we would make the same hell that our open enemy, the devil, has made for us. For more than 60 years, exactly 62 to be exact, a savior has come to you and I. That's right. And every time we look for that savior, we keep thinking sky high <laughs> up in space. Is that right? And we think that space is going to answer us. Well, actually, space is going to <laughs> answer us because there are objects out in space that are moving, targeting planet Earth. Yes, We've got all kinds of elements out there. That's right. If we were to investigate That's astronomy right. and discover what is going on. But Allah said that he allows an enemy, one who is about to be destroyed, to peep That's right. into the marvels yes. of the divine creation. Yes, but we notice that ever since 1987 and really 1969 when they began the program of trying to colonize the moon, they have been disturbing the atmosphere, is that right? right. They have been creating havoc both in our universe and here on this planet. 
So many of the problems that we are now suffering are not only for their selfish aggrandizement of material power and capitalist gains. It is not only that they have robbed us of our ability to stand up for ourselves, but they are contributing to the pollution of our air. They are contributing to the pollution of our streams that are killing our fish. They are contributing to the killing and mutilation of cattle. They are popping hormones in our cattle and we're buying that stinky, nasty food to feed our children. And we expect that they're go going to stay off of drugs. We expect that they're going to stop buying guns to shoot one another and shoot you and me. We expect and we say, oh, what has gone wrong? And what do we want to do? You want to keep putting the blame on the white man. Why cannot we continue along this line? Because a savior has come. And he has pointed out the enemy and he has given us a program that if we would put it into practice would eliminate all the problems that we're having today. two beautiful books, How to Eat to Live, yes. book one and two. And he gave us the proper diet, the proper cleansing. Why? He knew that this devil was going to be fighting us with all kinds of covert and, and hidden ways of trying to snuff out our life. He is injecting and spraying chemicals in the atmosphere. Some I don't know about this. Some honky movie star <laughs> dropped over dead somewhere, spraying pesticide, is that right? In his garden. Snuffed him out. So this devil is so smart. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we will never know the depths of Satan. And that he is his aim, please understand, his aim is to destroy us as it was on the island of Patmos, where it all began. He selected, Yaqub did, one of our own. But we've got to understand the wisdom in that. He went to work on the weaker part of the black man. And in going to work on the weaker part of the black man, he ordained a plan of birth control so that he could ultimately produce an enemy that would be an opponent of you and I and of the God Almighty. But God allowed it to happen. Why? So that we could take a look at what was lying dormant in ourselves. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, this is why we do the freaky, crazy things that we do, because that germ is still lying dormant inside of us. So the more that he can use a live devil to keep throwing flames at us, the weaker and weaker that weak germ inside of us will become. Until we flush it out of our system and say, never again, never again. for us, brothers and sisters, to be free. I'm just going to tell it to you like it is. All of us, and quickly, have to return to the source of the wisdom and the power and the majesty of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right, right. He came as the one to bound up the wounds of our affliction. That's right. And we have not shown grace or thankfulness That's to right. Almighty God Allah. Right. We are not showing thankfulness that we are still here and not up under the ground. By now, we should be part of the rubble because the time that was given to the devils to rule was up in 1914. So you count the years and see how God's grace is just continuing to give us more time and a little more time and a little more time. But I've got to tell you, this afternoon, 
that there are things that are going on in outer space that may very well collide with this planet. And there are things that are going on in outer space that the scientists of this world, of the white American United States government, are aware of, and that's why they keep sending up their shovels. That's why they keep probing up there. What did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say? That ultimately their goal is to go to war. With whom? The one who came to deliver us. He came to go to war with us, to destroy us if he could, and knowing that his time was limited and that he had but a short time to live, he's making now every preparation to take as many of us down with him as he can. We've got to wake up, brothers and sisters, going into politics, going into the direction of trying to make some kind of an appeasement with our open enemy is over. Bush is an agent of the most diabolical character that we have ever had or seen in the office of presidency oh, yeah. of any country on the face of the planet Earth. He was trained as the head of the CIA. Right. Is that right? Yes. And he worked some of the most notorious right. schemes right. during the time of right. uh, the death of President Kennedy. Is that right? right? Yes. During the time of the assassination of Malcolm X. Right. During the time of the assassination of Martin Luther King. Yes. Is that right? right. Yes. During this period of the 60s, and look at the number, six. He was working on the number of the beast. Yes. And the devils know their number and their time. That's right. But they don't want you to listen to Elijah Muhammad, to right. Minister Louis Farrakhan, to anybody that's talking that that's black right. Islam. Right. creation of God himself. Look at it from a genetic point of view. How long can white people stay in the sun without burning or blistering or blowing up? <laughs> scientific investigation that the planet Earth was a hot, molten mass. Is that right? Yeah, right? That if there was a big bang, there was an explosion and an extension of energy that is constantly expanding in our universe. Is that right? That's right. And ultimately, atoms were created out of the atoms of hydrogen. Is that right? Oh, yeah. And then later, added on to the other components of the elements that make up the atomic structure of our Earth and our universe until it ultimately picked up a cycle of revolving in our universe around the sun right at the exact measurement that made it possible ultimately for water to be produced. And then when water was produced, then man came into being. Is that right? Now, what kind of man could live in temperatures of that intensity. Only a man who had enough melanin to protect himself, is that right, from the heat of that time. And when you look at the belt where the ancient civilizations were, they're along the equator, is that right? Along the tropical belt. And you don't find any sign of any white man ever there. Wherever you have to look for the white man, you've got to look in the, in the Aegean Sea. Is that right? You've got to go tapping on those islands out there, those Greek islands. Go take a vacation, sail out on the islands, pop up on Patmos, find those little caves, start doing some digging. You might find some needles that a nurse uses.
we see causing all this trouble. He is a scientist, okay? And he trains his people in an educational system to keep us blind, deaf, and dumb so that he can become and remain the dominant ruler. That is his nature. And guess what? The black man and some of the prophets even aided them in their growth so that they could dominate us. Why? To put more and more fire on that which needed to be purified so that it could ultimately evolve into perfection. So we have to take the fire and we've got to be patient enough to rely upon not ourselves, but rely upon the power of Almighty God, Allah Himself, before this thing is over with. But we can't rely upon Him just with emotion or our thought or what we think, okay? We have got to be right and exact, right and exact. And we must follow the program of the Honorable um, Elijah Muhammad, the Muslim program, once and believes. Have we forgotten it? No, what is the first part of the want? We want freedom. A full and complete freedom. Is that right? Then it goes on to equality. Is that right? And then what? Justice. Is that right? And then what? That we cannot live with our slave masters in peace and have given our life and our blood and our sufferings for over 400 years in servitude, slavery. We demand a state or some states of our own, either on this continent or elsewhere. Is that right? That's where we are. So we are like reflecting and going back through the cycles of history and the cycles of time. And then in Time Magazine, for the issue of August the 10th, if some of you saw it, a plan which they put in the past for the evacuation of the executive branch of the United States government hmm, into secret conclaves that they had planned way back in the 60s. Is that right? After World War II, post-World War War II. Is that right? Because they knew that when they allowed their nuclear physicists and their scientists to experiment on the atomic bomb, and then they allowed it to be tested in the white sands and Los Alamos in New Mexico, they had the intention to kill the brown man. Is that right? And they went and dropped it on Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki. Is that right? All right. This is a devil, brothers and sisters. And he's still here because he uses 100,000, 100 million, 100 billion, 100 trillion percent of technology on you and I today. domination of Marxism, etc., etc., but revolution is breaking out all over, and the 18th surah of the Holy Quran says that we will build a wall for a while, and then at the proper time, that wall will be broken, and then hell will be exposed to view, and we will cause the tribes of God and Magog to come down from the northern parts of the world, and they will make a slaughter. over a hundred thousand, a hundred ten million of an oriental army. And this oriental army will march through the river Euphrates. Is that right? Where is Bush and where is the military command now? They've got troops again. Where? In Kuwait, near, well, Kuwait. That's right. That's right. 
And they're doing some fancy maneuvering, see? Daring Saddam Hussein. We're going to get you this time. We're going to get you this time. But how do they know that what's up will not come down? the old world order of the old ancient civilizations are being stirred. You see? Ancient Babylon, right? Ancient Chaldea. Ancient Sumeria. This was the land of the black man before this, hmm, all right, this civilization that has come to take its place. The, the Caucasian Arabic Muslims. This is no but why do they have that little bit of resentment to us? Why do they have that little bit of racism or racism? Why? Because they are a part of the problem in the East. They are part of the people that went back into the Holy Land. And when they went back into the Holy Land, at, in them days, <laughs> there was only black people. Okay? So because our hearts are so good, and we didn't recognize the devil. <laughs> we started hiding him in our home. Oh, oh how terrible. But the children, look what the children did. The children start picking up stones. Oh, my God. And start throwing them at this thing. I've never seen anything like this. White skin, blue eyes, yellow hair. They were frightened to death. And look what the children are doing today. Picking up stones, huh? Picking up metal, steel pipes, anything. See? History repeats itself. And that branch of the Caucasian race that did not go into Europe, all right, went into the Caucasus Mountains and settled in all these little places where we hear Karakastan, okay, Tajikistan, okay, the Central Republics of Russia. Is that right? Where we find millions and millions of Muslims. Isn't it amazing to see these white Muslims on the television in Bosnia and suffering and Croatia and all of those places with strange names, Croatia, like cro Magnon Man, all of those places with the caves and hillsides of Europe, all right, where they were lodged. And then because of the grace of Allah, Muhammad came to try to give a final warning to the members of the white race. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that when he made pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca, and he did his circumambulations around the Kaaba, and that him and he went to kiss the black stone. Uh -huh. That he said he really felt cheap and a little shy to kiss the black stone, because he knew what the little black stone represented. Little black stone represents little black Jesus. schools of the Islamic world. Is that right? To come under the control of Mecca. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Mecca itself and Arabia itself will be cleansed of the white race. It does not mean that there will be a violent attack against them, but by their very nature, what have they done? They have allied themselves with the Western powers, right? Showing that they don't believe in Allah, they believe in America's dollars and commerce and exchange and trade. Is that right? So we don't mind 
if you send in your soldiers over here because actually we are scared to death because Khomeini started something in 1979 that's about ready to sweep over the entire Islamic world that they call Islamic fundamentalists. Is that right? But they call them not fundamentalists, they call them the militants. Now let's go back into a little history, all right? The Shia branch of the Islamic world were the founders of the highest educational system that the Islamic world has ever had. Did you know that it was under the Fatimid dynasty, Fatima being the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad that established their rule in Egypt, in Cairo. And it was under the Fatimid dynasty that they established the great and oldest university in the world, Al Azhar University. And during the time of its um, origin, did you know? that the curriculum at Al Azhar University at that time was more open for the study of the high sciences of mathematics, more open to the exploration and the sciences of metaphysics, was more open in their curriculum to allow women to come and participate in the educational process. But when the Sunni branch of Islam came into power, they put a stop to that and confined the curriculum to reading Quran, to the recitation of the holy book, to certain uh, uh, fundamental practices and studies of philosophy and mathematics. And women were barred from studying at al Azhar University until in the 1960s. It was only then. Now there is a prophecy, brothers and sisters, that we're going to talk about. It says that Islam, after rising majestically under Muhammad and the companions and the immediate period thereafter, that it would have a setback. Is that right? A setback of approximately 1,000 years. So that means that approximately in three centuries, Islam, or I should say, the adherents of Islam betrayed their prophet. But he knew that it was coming. And so from that point on, the center of education in the Islamic world went to Egypt. That is not an accident. Egypt today is still the center of training for the doctors and the lawyers and the teachers that are sent throughout the Islamic world into the Emirates, into Saudi Arabia. The majority of the scholars and the highly trained ones come from Al Azhar University. The former temporary president of Afghanistan until they had the election and chose the present president, El Professor Subhatella uh, Mujadila. He was trained out of Al Azhar University. The point being that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Al Azhar University was a sign of something. What is it a sign of? Look, the name of a woman, Fatima, became a part of the domination of the Fatimid dynasty who were under the Shia influence or the Shia religion. Is that right? Part of the religion. 1,000 years from the day that they had their first class 
was not in the university but in the mosque. And the mosque was called the Mosque of Al-Azhar, the resplendent light. And 1,000 years from the day that they opened their first class in the Mosque of Al-Azhar in Cairo, Egypt, which was in the year 975 A.D. Add 1,000 and where do we come? 1975. Is that right? And what happened in the West in 1975? Come on. The departure of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Is that right? And it was a sign of the future world that would be set up under the sign of the Messiah, the millennium, the 1,000 year reign of Christ. So out of one branch, listen now, of Muhammad's family of 1,400 years ago, it was predicted according to his sayings, to his companions, that one would be born along the line of time who would fulfill a great prophecy that he would bring justice in the land where there was no justice, that he would bring equality into the land and freedom, and that he would fill the earth with the abundance of God's spirit, and that wealth would come forth to all those who had been rejected and despised. Is that right? That's right. And that one, according to the Islamic jurisprudence, is called the hidden Imam. And he is also referred to as the Mahdi. Many have their thoughts about who the Mahdi is. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to make a distinction between who you think Mehdi is and who the Mehdi is. He said, the Mehdi came into the wilderness of North America by himself. And his name, Master Wallace Farrar Muhammad. And Master Wallace Farrar Muhammad is not sleep. He's not even hiding. And he most certainly is not dead. The Europeans remained to fulfill another destiny. And that part of their destiny was to expand westward. Is that right? That's right. But with the pretense that they were looking for a way to the east. Is that right? But according to some of the true history of Christopher Columbus, who is being celebrated, right, this year as a discoverer of America for white people, right? That it is said that he knew exactly where he was going. But that the pretense was that he was looking for an outlet to India. So when he arrived here, he found Indians that he called Indians. But we must not really call them Indians because it's a degradation. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that they are part of the original nation. That they are part of the black nation. And to prove it, we have a lesson. Student enrollment. When we come to enroll in the studies of Islam under the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we must answer 10 questions and answers. And one of these 10 questions and answers gives us the population of the original nation in the wilderness of North America. And that population of the original nation is 17 million plus 2 million Indians who are also original, making 19 million. So we have yet, we have not yet fulfilled this joining together of our Native American members of the original nation. And there are many reasons for this that we will not go into, you know, at the present moment. But let it suffice to say that at one time we will be forced to join in an alliance.
for survival. And just as it was in the time of slavery, many of the Indians or the Native Americans, we took refuge on their reservation so that 99 and one half percent of us as mixed with Native American or Indian blood. Is that right? Some of us went down into the Everglades and there we were with the Seminoles, right? Some of us went on the Trail of Tears from Georgia and became part of the Cherokee Nation. Some of us went up into North Carolina and South Carolina, down into Louisiana, became members of the Blackfoot tribe. And then some of us crossed over the border into Canada and became part of the Mohawk and the Dena Nation. All of this is a sign that we are part and parcel of each other and we can't get away from it. But we do have a mark of distinction. Rebelliousness. The Native American was exiled according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because he broke the rule of where we began in this lecture. Worshipping the one God. And he set up idols, is that right? And pretty soon as you have in Hinduism, not the Vedas or the Brahmans, the high caste, the people who study the metaphysical side of their religion, you have villages and places throughout India and throughout Asia and throughout Malaysia or wherever that the Hinduism and in parts where Buddhism is practiced, they carve out idols, is that right? And that is an affront to God. So. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the Hindu was so dangerous in his fanaticism that if you were to see, brother, a Hindu and a Christian walking together, you would have to destroy the Hindu first. Because he is more poisonous and he has been an enemy for 35,000 years. That's all in student enrollment. So look, brothers and sisters, what you are missing by not coming and joining the nation of Islam. We get all the degrees of the universe, the whole circle of the supreme wisdom, 360 degrees. And if you come into the nation of Islam, you will regain your dignity, regain your pride, your self-respect, how? Because you're going to get a full knowledge of yourself which leads ultimately to a full and complete freedom to exercise your rights as a human being equal with every other human being on the planet Earth. Now, this year, the 500th anniversary of this celebration that's coming up October 12, right? Come on, man. 500 years. Here's another part of the world that was dominated by the Spanish, and they sent the Jesuit priests, and they sent the Pope of Rome and Catholicism, and they had a very well laid out plan. If we take the Pope, and we make him as God, in his place, then we can get these people who are really heathens to bow down and worship the Pope of Rome as God sitting in the place of God, the Most High. Is that right? So the Catholic Pope and the religious people of that time prepared a doctrine they prepared a doctrine and a tactic by which they would be able to dominate and rule over the masses of people. They were given the knowledge by Moses when they were in their training period in the caves and hillsides of Europe, ultimately it came to that, that they were given a little help. They had to learn how to master the original man. And what was it about the original man that they have been able to master? They know that we are spiritual. Not religious people, but spiritual. What does that mean? 
That means that we have the ability when we are ourselves to be able to perform miraculous things and have gifts that we have the ability to tune in and send our thoughts and receive thoughts. Is that right? And that we can move out and perform acts of healing. It's easy to the black man and the black woman. It's easy to look into the future and say, I see such and such is going to happen and such and such is going to happen over there. That's not taught. That's in the very nature of the black man and woman when he is himself. So the, the white man knew that we had this. So he had to set up an opponent to the very essence of what is in yourself. So he comes along and he brings some more idols. After he goes through Europe and goes to the sacred places where images of Mary and the images of Jesus are known in Europe and in St. Petersburg and Russia to have been the places of worship of the Black Madonna. Then they go and they ultimately change the color. Is that right? And start painting it with pink lips and pink cheeks, huh? And a little blonde thing hanging on, dangling down on the side. And give us a white Jesus and a white uh, uh, Mary, and then come over and say, this is your Jesus and God, see? And then he comes looking just like the picture and the image of his little white Jesus and white Mary, right? So they say, oh, well then you must be the representatives, then you must be the gods too, see? So we gave up our power, and then to the people of the Hispanic or Mexico, Central America, Mesoamerica, South America, and the Caribbean, they did exactly the same thing. In fact, Catholicism is the dominant stranglehold on the people of Central America and South America. And there will come a time when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that they will be cleansed out of that area. They will be cleansed out of Asia, which you can see. They're on their way out of Asia. They're not in Asia anymore. Is that right? They're on their way out. And so they have no place to go but where? Back to Europe, you see? So then when America is forced to have to send her troops into, Amer or into Europe, you see? Then he said that Europe would become a graveyard. Right. He said it would become a graveyard and when the troops who would gain a short-lived victory, they would be so weakened from the battle, but when they would come back, they would find a change in America yes, if we do the right thing. Yes, that change is that we would ultimately find ourselves again, right. learn to love ourselves again, right. get back into the power of ourselves again. Is that right? And then learn to love each other and come together in unity regardless to our religious our thinking or our differences on political grounds, we need to put all that aside because those are the ways and the devices of Satan to keep us divided. From now on, Muslim, you're a Christian. From now on, Christian, you're a Muslim. And shut the devil up. So the importance of us first uniting with self is the key. That's right. Then with dignity and respect, we can charter away with our Native American brothers and sisters. Right. You see? Right. Then we can charter away with our Mexican and Chicano and Puerto Rican brothers and sisters, right. our Hispanic brothers and sisters that are also suffering from the same diseases and the same uh, technology that has been practiced right. by this devil. So why are we talking so strongly about the unification of black and Indian or Native American and Hispanic today? Because we have come to the 500th anniversary. And not only that, we are working on the mathematical code. And this mathematical code is going to begin to unlock and reveal things to us individually, right. apart from, in, and independent from, a teacher or a guide, etc. Because when things get very, very rough, as they will be in within, I would say, and I'll give you in my closing remarks why, within the next seven months, 
we have some very strong confrontations that are coming up. And we have no choice but then to unite and to join on to those who are in the struggle, whether they be black or red or yellow or brown or perhaps even a fragment of whites, I don't know. Their future, I'm not concerned, but they know what they have to do to get in the door because when Israel went out under the command of Moses, a fragment or a, a, a group of the Israelites went out, not Israelites, of the Egyptians, is that right? right. Went out with them. Right. So what they have to do to get that privilege, I don't know. But the uh, Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, that Master Farad Muhammad said, that any good that any white person would do will merit its award. And we have been given instructions that there are approximately three million Muslim sons or white persons in this country who have been under a certain training. And that that training will help to qualify them to be able to have a little grace period, okay? The sign of Noah, the sign of, excuse me, Jonah. Uh, when Jonah came, the punishment or the chastisement was stayed for maybe about a century or so. If America can be alerted in time enough and the right people in the right positions in the government know the proper thing that they have to do, then and only then, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, there may be a stay of the execution. So. He also said that Master Farad Muhammad had the power to take this country without striking a match. So that means that we will be given a certain knowledge as we evolve. A certain knowledge that will make us strategically able to wrap the white man and his evil technology around our finger. That's what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. And we will be able to demand and receive that which was taken from us over 400 years ago. So the working of this mathematical code is what I want to end on. May I? Now, remember the sign of Al-Azhar University? 1,000 years to the exact time of 1975 and the Messenger of Allah departs. And he departs telling us, even though it appeared that he was dead, I know you went to a funeral, some of you heard it on the news, I don't give two hill of beans for what you heard on the news or what the medical reports may show. Master Farrar Muhammad has the ability right. to reverse dying and dead right. cells. Right. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that when a person yes. is pronounced dead, yes. that if he, Allah, can get to that person That's right. within 24 That's right. or 48 hours, That's right. that he can revive that person. That's right. So he taught us yes. in how to eat to live, that he had the ability to regenerate the cells of the body and bring us back again to the age of 16. Is that right? Do we believe in a God or a spook? See? Do we know that God is real? Or do we think that he is invisible? He has powers that he works on the invisible side. <laughs> but he is made of the same material out of which the universe itself is generated. All right? And I must say this, brothers, we must learn to love, respect, and honor our women. Because if you understand the proximity and the beautiful connection that the female woman power has to God. And then when you realize that when you mistreat her, you're cutting off your life source to God. That if you mistreat
treat her and beat her Which and her. cause her to her. live in an environment her. whereby that she is going to create for you out of the womb of life a monster instead of a god, then we know that we are going to have to understand the beauty of the black That's right. Right. Go back to the universe. Yes, black out white. And you have a womb. Yes, is that right? That's right? And it is a black womb. That's is that right? right? And when God, according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, self-created himself out of that dark womb of space, he said whatever material there was in the darkness of space was sufficient for him to generate and recreate or create himself out of the essence of the material that was in the darkness. All right? Then, when he studied himself after he was self-created, he saw the woman. And the first act of his creation outside of himself was the woman who acted as a reflection and a mirror of himself as the second self of God. Is that right? And then he and she and she and he recreated and generated and produced everything that we see in this universe. How do we know? The planets are what? She. The moon. She. How do we know the moon is she? Because we have the history to prove it. In the flag of Islam, meaning freedom, justice, and equality. What do we have? We have the emblem of the sun and the moon and the star. Is that right? And the moon, history, we were given. And the sun, history, we were given. And the star, history, we were given. Way before we were embattled over here with these stripes like prisoners in the, in the land of America. What is that history? That's 66 trillion years ago, a scientist from among the black nation had a predetermined idea that he wanted all the people to speak the same language. Is that right? And so the other scientists disagreed with him, but because his idea dominated, he was able to set into the molten core of the earth a certain type of dynamite that blasted off a part of our earth and set it up as a satellite called the moon. And this satellite of the moon origin is from where? Does she have a first name? Mother Earth. the moon looking down on you bad fellas. See? All right? And then we've got the sign of our monthly, the menstrual cycle, which is a sign of once every 21 to 28 days. Is that right? And before the moon was ejected and went up 12 miles high, according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the earth fell into its present pocket or cycle around the sun, dropping 36 thousand miles. He said that we were working on the number 13, not on the base of 12. Right. Gotta understand that. Right. What is the proof? All he right. said there were 13 tribes right. and one got lost. That's is that right? right? Sure. And that was the platform out of which Israel and the 12 tribes was actually rooted. It's rooted in the 12 major scientists right. who kept a secret, back to that secret, for trillions and trillions of years until one was born from the womb of a woman, born from the womb of a mother to wake us up, who has power over the universe, who has power over the atmosphere, who has power over the sun, who has power over the moon, who has power over the stars. Why? to let you know that this was you before you were made a slave. That's right. This is you. The essence of you is reflected in him and he's reflecting his essence back to you so that you can get a picture of what God looks like, what God talks like, what God walks like. We look to the heavens. How many times 
in one solar year does the moon make her revolution around the earth? 13 times. Is that right? According to the ancient Egyptians, according to the ancient Maya Olmec culture of Mexico and Mesoamerica, they were working on a system of 13 constellations, not 12. Something is missing. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said there's a missing note in music. And a scientist, a musician, a master named Mr. Carrillo in Mexico discovered what they call the 13th note. All right. He reached beyond the 12 chromatic scale in music and hit back again on the number 13. Yes. What is this telling Jeez. us? Come on, wake us up. Jeez. He told us very little about that history. He said that tribe got lost. Mm -hmm. So it's very clear if they got lost that they were destroyed by some kind of devastation, some kind of cataclysmic event. And we're close to another cataclysmic event that this 66 trillion year old history is pointing to. Finally, may I share this information with you? In the same period of time, when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad departed, A scientist born in Tanta, Egypt, who is now deceased. He died by murder. Yes, he was killed. Yes, and I'm speaking of the late Dr. Rashad Khalifa. Right. In 1975, I was in Cairo, Egypt, and I was recording a musical symphonic score based on one of my own original compositions, based on the title of the Quran 110th surah, called El Nasr, the help, when Allah's help and victory comes, and thou seest the people entering into the religion of Islam in companies celebrate the praise of my Lord. Dr. Rashad Khalifa was in the neighboring country of Libya. And he was contracted there as a teacher under the Libyan government, under Muammar Gaddafi. And he was performing, along with the other teachers and staff of the school, calisthenics. And as was their custom, their custom, they would listen to the radio broadcast from one of the most popular imams coming out of Cairo, Egypt. And he began to speak about the number of times that you hear the name Rahman, or how many times you hear the name Rahim in the Holy Quran. And it was at that particular point when he felt the idea and the thought that what if he were to take the Quran and put it into the computer. And so doing, he discovered that, first of all, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim contains 19 letters. And from that study that he did, he emerged with a prophetic sign that was cast, I would say, against his Arab brothers and colleagues of the Islamic world. And for that reason, it is suspicion. I didn't say it has been proven. It has been dis, uh, suspicion that an order, which is called a fatwa, was ordered from among highly placed persons in Arabia because he stated that the old world of Islam, the old hypocritical way, that Islam under the orthodox way has been carrying out Islamic business is an affront to God. And he was bold enough and he knew that he would have to pay with his life. But it was in that instance and in that exact year when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad departed in preparation 
for what is getting ready to become known, that this mathematical code of the 19 was revealed. Shortly thereafter, I had never met Dr. Rashad Khalifa until January of 1980. And I met him because I had heard that someone was working on the mathematical code of the Holy Quran. And we know that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, Islam is mathematics. Mathematics is Islam. Is that right? So my children and I had the opportunity to meet him exactly at the time of the changeover of the old Arab calendar of 1400 years from the time of Prophet Muhammad to the first year of the 15,000 year or the 15,000th year of the Hijra, that is, since the flight. This is very, very important. I pray a lot that I can explain it clearly to you. During the flight, now we know the flight meant that he was under attack. Is that right? Yes, I am. <clears throat> that Muhammad had to flee for his life. Is that right? That's right? And he had to flee for his life with his companions. And he left one man behind to take care of the business that he was not able to take care of. And that man he left in his bed was Ali. Is that right? That's right. And he left the charge to Ali to take care of all his debts or and his family and the believers, etc., etc., etc. Now, I learned from Dr. Rashad Khalifa that the song and the composition that I had recorded in Cairo, Egypt in 1975, and it happened to be the same month of the same year that I was recording this music when he was in Libya, though I had never heard of him nor met him until 1980, he told me, he said, did you know? He said that that surah is the last chapter that was revealed in completion, a whole chapter that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad before his demise. I said, that part, yes. He said, did you know that not only the Bismillah Rahman Rahim containing the 19 letters, but the very first verse contains 19 letters. I said, no. Then he said, did you know that all of the words of that verse are exactly 19 words? And I said, no, I didn't. He said, what do you think that the number 19 represents? And at that time, he was early to in his research. So I said, I'm really not sure. I said, the only thing I can think of at this moment is that the number that comes immediately after it is 20. <laughs> so I departed, and we had no more contact until approximately three years, approximately three years later. And during that process of time, a seed had been dropped. And knowing that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that after him, that there would come a certain class of people that would be following him up, that would verify his work, verify his mission, and discover whether or not we were really true believers or not. Is that right? And he said that once these kind of scientists reveal themselves, they can be killed because they are human. They are flesh and blood. So the price that Dr. Khalifa paid was the price of a martyr in Islam. And he boldly, from among their own people, warned Mecca that the Arabs would be severely chastised. And that occurred, his assassination occurred on January 31st, the same month that I met him, it's the same month that he passed. Ten years later, in the same month or a few days after the killing of our brother, 
Oliver Beasley, here in Los Angeles. That was the same year that Nelson Mandela was released from prison after 27 years. And I'm noting that all of these sequential events of prophetic significance are occurring on this western side of the United States of America. Because Dr. Rashad Khalifa did his studies in the state of Arizona. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that when these type of people come among us, he said they will be working under various disguises. Some of them will be under the title of mm, physicians, they could be medical personnel, they could be doing a number of, of, of jobs. And he told me, when we met him, that he was so excited to know that we were the family of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and that back in Egypt and in Africa, where his father was the head over a large body of Sufi Muslims that, that run from North Africa all the way into the Emirates on the Saudi Arabian Peninsula, that he heard his name while he was still in Egypt before he ever came to the United States. And he said that since he was a young man, gaining his degrees as he became a PhD, a state chemist for the state of Arizona, that he would tell the other members of the Arab world to leave the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam alone. Because God had them on a certain course. And one day, without going too much longer on this point, he made a tape in 1986. And in this tape, he states that he believes that Minister Louis Farrakhan will be the one that will lead us into the establishment of the New World Kingdom of Islam on Earth. And he said that the nation of Islam will become the nucleus of that new world order. So sometimes, brothers and sisters, when we come into new knowledge, we don't know who we're meeting, we don't know who we're talking to, right. but we go forward in the pursuit of knowledge right. in the name of Allah, right. the beneficent, the merciful. And as a result of this number 19, we have grown more and more in seeing the beauty of how the mathematics works in giving us a full and complete knowledge of who we are. And now, who the black woman is, brother. That's right. The black woman is your Mary. That's right. When you turn to the 19th surah of the Holy Quran, it talks about the mother of Jesus. And it is named Maryam. And from 16th verse to the 34th verse, it speaks about Mary's visitation of a holy one. And that this holy one came to her as a spirit, listen, but this spirit manifested itself in a well-made man and announced to her that she was going to give birth to a very, very powerful boy. Okay? So Mary had to take on this great challenge because after she conceived the child, she had to go into hiding. And then after she gave birth to the child, she had to come before the public. And coming before the public 
caused a scandal and a calumny. Because the people were not operating off of the high spiritual divine laws right. that brought this all about. That's right. They were working on a low base right. mentality. And they did not know that this woman was giving birth to the one who would become the Messiah and the Savior of the world. So we, the black people, were put under the sign, this is so important, under the sign of Mary, the mother of Jesus and her son, as a sign to the nations of the world. So if the code, the mathematical code of the Holy Quran is a number, and that number is 19, look at this. And the one who made the discovery by the grace of Almighty God, Allah, points to the nation of Islam as the sign for the nations, is that right? To herald in and to bring in a new world government of peace and of righteousness. How? Should we rejoice? How now should we be happy? Because the true Jesus, the true Mary, the true Christ, and the true Messiah turns out to be you and me in America, a nation of 35 million, almost 40 million Jesuses and Marys, and the Messiah has come to life. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I'm telling you brothers and sisters, right now before we go any further, is alive and well. Yes, ma'am. And the Honorable Minister Louis Parakan is not going anywhere in a casket. You remember that scripture that's written in the book of Revelation. I believe it's chapter 11. Following the final bugle or trumpet call of the seventh angel who says the mystery of God is ended. And the time that we have known, we will know no more. In the 11th chapter, there was a conspiracy. And the conspiracy evolved around a death plot to take away two witnesses to the presence of God. And when the people looked upon what they thought was the dead bodies of those witnesses that stood before the temple of God, they rejoiced. And they said, oh, those two who had tormented the earth, and had left us in disarray. We are so happy that they are gone. And then, and then, suddenly, their dead bodies stood up. And the people were afraid because they didn't stand up on the earth. They came down in the sign of a majestic mechanical ship called the mother ship, laugh. Make fun of that. And just in a few more days, we can look up <laughs> and see the reality of these ships over all of the major cities. We might be that close. The Honorable Minister Farrakhan told us every time he stepped out of this country, wherever he went, on the world friendship tours, when he went to Baghdad to try to stop Saddam Hussein from making his major mistake, to try to tell him you can't fight a war against the military might of this despotic ruler who is the real mystery Babylon. It's not that Babylon. He believes that he was united hmm, with the power of God to crush an enemy. But the real enemy that he is projecting to us is not we in this human form. 
He's fighting against the powers and the principalities of a higher power that is God himself. Now, why am I opening up like this? Because it is that Allah inspired me to do so. <laughs> And I know, and I feel, as you know, and you feel, that we're at a critical climax to a whole period of history that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that once we had to walk in his footsteps and live through aspects of these old histories, we will no longer need the Bible or the Holy Quran. He told us back in 1972 there were two more and maybe three or four more books still coming that contained parts and portions of a history that had nothing to do with the world that we're in, but that that world could not be revealed while the enemy was still in rulership, still in control. So the Millions More movement last year one of our sisters had the vision that he sh she shared with the Honorable Minister Farrakhan concerning the presence of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in Washington, D.C. How did he make his appearance? How was he present? Remember, Jesus slipped up on the people in disguises all the time. And he was testing them all the time. Sometime he came indescript. That means undescribable. Sometimes he could be the gardener, right? He could be uh, cutting your grass, I don't know. <laughs> he might be the paper gentleman bringing you your Final Call newspaper. <laughs> he can come as he pleases. He said that Master Farrar Muhammad had the ability then, as he taught us in the early 30s and the 40s, that he could be in many places all at once. Is that right? So that kind of language confuses people because only in higher circles of the aesthetic kind of teaching or teachings that takes you up in uh, higher dimensions, they talk about the ascended masters. Is that right? And there are descending masters. Is that right? And what has happened to us for the lack of the use of the proper language, we get confused and think it's spooky. You see what I'm saying? And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that they are angels, real angels that don't have wings, that are in our midst today, that are writing our records as we speak. Everyone who walks into a mosque or a study group and is registered with the Nation of Islam, right. there are appointed guardians over you and me. Don't forget that. So they are tracking everything we do. Where we go, what neighborhood we live in, they are unseen at the moment. But at a particular moment, they will make themselves visible to a few who can recognize their marks, recognize their speech. Hmm? Recognize that they are here to take care of business. Yes, and those little books telling us all about ourselves. So we don't need to start talking about what we think we know about each other. The books are already being written. And they'll have a little dialogue. Sister so-and-so said so-and-so about so-and-so. And we already wrote it. OK, we already wrote what you were going to say. <laughs> So we are a silly people, and God said we are so silly that he said even the worst of us might be lucky enough to be not taken but forced out of the destruction that is set for our enemy because he loves us so much, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, that he doesn't want us to burn in that kind of nuclear fire. We're not talking about forest fire. Somebody dropped a match. <laughs> no. We're talking about cutting a shortage in the atoms of the atmosphere in the air that we are breathing. So that kind of fire, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, is not like a, a, a fire that you can have from a forest fire. He said it's a nuclear uh, breaking up 
They're finding now old fossils, skeletons, and remains that traces everybody's origin back to a tribe in Africa. So who are we? We really don't know ourselves at all. We are the powerful progenitors of, of a cosmic, I have to say it this way, cosmic race that settled on our planet. In our teachings, think back, it says, when our planet was found. Who found it and where did we come from to find, find it, yes? See? Because remember, way back in those days, which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad only gave us a hint, only a hint of how majestic a people we were. But who in the world have you ever heard, quote, from any historical or scholarly perspective, histories that take you back into trillions of years. Did he make that up? Or was he taught by a master, a god, who he said traced back to star histories in order to track our DNA and our evolution from darkness of space that had the material to produce a living human being that had to be the color of the material of darkness in order to survive, okay, the heat that existed at that time in the making of the sun, okay? So we are not just earthbound builders, we are cosmic architects. We design the world that we live in. So who is mother? Who are these women? Who are these special ladies? Who are these special goddesses, if I will? They are the repositories of the wisdom that's locked up inside of them as they were the witness bearers of the birth of the first god. And you will not find that except in your genetic DNA. You track it through a drop of blood. And that drop of blood is called the mikontral, or mikon, how do they call it? Mikondrial, there we are. That traces back to mother. And on the other side, listen to this, she had the genetic material to make the Y chromosome, which is the male. So all men, all over the planet trace themselves back to the original Adam, the scientific Adam, as they, the scientists, are now discovering. And they've set up all over this planet. They're so busy like bees, like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, you know, they will reveal to us the truth of our teaching. He said, just wait. They are peeping into the heavens. That's one part. They're peeping through the uh, microscope. They're trying to manipulate yes. the genes That's now, right. all right? Through medical breakthroughs and, and all that we are hearing is helpful to us, all right? Because we don't have the money, we don't have the training for the main, so we should be thankful to the white man that we produced. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> for returning back to us the base of our original essence and culture. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, Master Farad Muhammad traveled all over the world with all peoples, all nations, and he extracted what? The best, like a bee. He's taking the nectar of all of the cultural combinations of peoples and nations around the world. And then out of that, he will recreate not the same, but recreate an evolutionary track that we will be the most perfect and most beautiful people that the earth has ever seen in any civilization traced back to the beginning of time. That is what Allah is promising us. So these little things that we're going through are not so little, I know, when you have to deal with them on a daily basis. But when you keep the bigger picture in your mind, 
Right. You know, then we should be happy and we should be busy as bees as the master presented to us how he walked this planet and what he was doing. There is no vacation time, okay? I can't imagine going down into Africa wearing hip boots and studying uh, serpents and other animals that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Master Farrar Muhammad had mastered. I can't imagine going to the zoo and being able to communicate with a, with a gorilla and speak his language. These are the things that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the master did right in front of everyone. Why did he want us to know all of this? Because we are following in the footsteps, you see, of the master to become a master ourselves. So if we do not value and love that knowledge and that wisdom that he taught, whether it comes from a male or a female, or from a child. God is bringing in a new people for the Messiah. You know that. You study our children today. They're much more alert. They're, they're not, they don't come out with their heads you know, wobbling over to the side. They almost come out looking at you and saying, who are you and why are you here? <laughs> Very brilliant. And, and we have to work with that thought in mind that we are providing a base, a foundation from when our children will be the benefactors. Because we've already had our time, as they say, and we can have more time, but we don't want to be out of time, you know what I mean? We don't want to get time. <laughs> For, <laughs> because we are not being dutiful. And that's one of the meanings of virtue. It means dutiful also. And it also means for the women, and how about for the men? Guarding your chastity. The male should guard their chastity, as well as the female. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us in such depth that he couldn't even tell us everything. He promised us in the theology of time that at a certain point, he was describing mm -hmm, the diameter of the universe. And as he was speaking on this subject, he said, one day, I would like to take the brothers in their FOI classes, and then our sisters in their MGT classes, and explain what that diameter uh, configuration was made from that caused a diameter to extend over the whole entire universe. So these are like secrets that we are yet to learn. And unfortunately, because we have accumulated so much rust on the rusty locks of our brain, we have self-imposed our own destruction so that we block the light. If God wants to reveal you something more, we're never ready. And we're never going to be ready until we learn to love the wisdom teachings that we have been given and nurse it in our classes of the FOI and the MGT. It is not about being a hard, cold officer that gives orders. That is not the way that we will make an intelligent uh, people that God will honor and choose to put over the world. Our promise is to be put on top of civilization, to be put on top of civilization. Can you imagine all the civilizations that you consider to be powerful, wonderful civilizations? But when you look at the timeline that they were given, they're only within 5,000, 6,000 years. China boasts of a history of 5,000 or so years. Korea boasts of a history 5,000. What is that in comparison to our history? And every time that there was a geographical location that was called, as it is today, the peninsula or country of Korea or the country of China or Japan and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us the root of that. He said, on the island of Pelan or present-day Patmos, each color that was produced 
from the germ of the black man out of the brown, okay, that every 200 years, he said some of that particular color fled the island. And they might, all of them didn't come back blonde, blue, and made hell in Mecca, okay, and tried to uh, disturb the holy people. That was the last branch of that race that was grafted out of our people. Now I'm gonna slide this over to complete this drop of blood and why it is traced to Africa and it has something to do with us, absolutely. Now, each color, when they fled in their most ancient or primitive history, chronicles, they found the black people. On the Yangtze River, they found tribes of black people. Even in Ireland, Scotland, Wales, they found African tribes. When they were tracking through Eurasia, and I know I had just experience in Mongolia, they found the evidence of black original ancestors. Do you understand? Yeah. So we are the original people, and it's being proven by the scholars, the historians, the archaeologists, the anthropologists, by the scientists. So we should let them do their work. And then thank them for doing their work because they thought that they had entrapped us so that no light could get into the head of their subordinate slaves. But their scientists are allowing certain evidence of who we really are to come out. And with the wake up message that we have received through this teaching, then we say, my God, that's the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Every discovery. Every new breakthrough, whether in medicine, genetics, you can name it, you can name it. Weather, global warming, uh, all of this, he taught us. So that there's no surprise. We can't hear anything that's a surprise. We're not surprised that Bush is modern Pharaoh. And that he's doing his work very, very well. He's so blind that he believes inside that he can master our teaching and the God that brought this teaching. So they are all blind. And as I close this particular lecture, we must be reminded that today is the anniversary of Honorable Minister Farrakhan's vision-like experience on the wheel. Now, man, according to the Christian theology, was made a little above the angels. In Islam, we are also a little above the angels. So if God, the originator, sends his messages to angels who are also described as messengers, we have also been anointed yes, yes, yes. through the example of our spiritual guides who have come before us to be anointed not to see us as simply, listen carefully, followers of the Christ or followers of the Messiah or followers of Moses or the Torah, the Gospels and the Holy Quran. But we have been anointed too to become saviors of our people. And we cannot speak the word without putting it into practice. So let us recite those opening verses, or one at least for the moment, because this chapter contains some secret wisdom that hopefully will unlock for each and one of you today to really understand that you are the chosen people of God. Go ahead, Mom. Go ahead. And that we had to go through the burning. We had to go through purgatory. 
We had to be drawn in the depths of hell. Go ahead. Yes, Go ahead. Yes, 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 yes. A people who cannot be defeated That's right. through 400 plus years yes. of slavery. Yes. That there is something inside of the black man in yes. particular yes. that no other people could have endured. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we are the mothers and the fathers, yes, yes. of civilizations. Yes. We are the mothers and the fathers of worlds within worlds within worlds. And we had to take a back seat in order to see what was inside of us in the form of our imperfection. Okay. Because, brothers and sisters, in the beginning, the originator had to make himself up out of nothing. He didn't himself know what that nothing was. But there was a vibratory pitch. Hmm? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, a force working in the dark that kept pulling up objects into view. And as the power or the force vibratory frequency began to move upon the waters from the book of Genesis. The Spirit of God moved upon the waters and there was no form, they say, in the beginning. There was no form of the divine creator. But through the frequency of mind and thought, he generated from a single cell of thought, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, everything that was necessary to produce first himself and then a divine creation that we call our solar system and galaxies after galaxy after galaxies was in his mind. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad did not give us magical, how do you say, fairy tale teachings. He told us that the scientists who were born in the circle of gods, that all they had to do was to think, to will something into existence. So stars, planets are not spooky. Do you see them? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do we, are we learning something about the star systems every day? Yes, ma'am. How they are connected even to our auditory mind? Yes, that if you concentrate long enough that you also can affect weather? Yes, we can make rain, hail, yes, right. snow, earthquake. Yes, we have been experimenting on this planet. That is why it is the home planet of the God. Because we experiment to perfect our creation. Yes. So sometimes we may be, I don't want to use the word uh, guinea pigs, but we had to operate on ourselves. I want to put a stop to people thinking that we are teaching mythology. I want to put a stop to people thinking that we are teaching racism. I pray Allah that when you leave this room today that you will understand every word that I speak from the spirit and power of our God, from the spirit and teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is pure science. So he said, sitting in the circle of the creation of our universe, that those who were assigned to helping him create worlds upon worlds, because you read only especially in the Holy Quran, the little word we, working with the God. In the Bible, maybe you can understand it in Genesis, let us. <laughs> so there's some plurality to the singularity of our identification of God. And to understand that, 
imagine that you're sitting with God uh-huh. right now. Mm-hmm. And he's directing us, willing us to pull out of us our creativity. So we are creators too. But we cannot be creators without tracing our origin to the originator. That keeps us humble, brothers and sisters. Because if we go around saying, I'm the God, you know, I'm the originator, then you're headed huh, for destruction. Not by an outside force, going back to that force, an inside force. The force that brought you here is the same force that was in the beginning, pulling up things and objects into view. There was a push, there was a force from your mother's womb that ultimately made the invisible visible. So if you trace your birth through nine months, you come out of your mother's womb. You cannot void it, male or female. They have not constructed the male yet, though they're probably trying. with a womb <laughs> to produce a child. So just imagine when God was making himself up into darkness, that darkness the Honorable Elijah Muhammad identified as a womb. How about that? So we just can't get away from the feminine. You can't throw the woman out. You can't disrespect the woman. You can't abuse the woman. You cannot use the woman and her child for your emotional, sexual passion. Without running into the God, okay? Because as you treat the woman, you are disrespecting God. The woman, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, was made the second self of God. She was made the twin of God. She is the recorder of everything that took place in the darkness of space. That is why the woman has that instinctive nature about her. And she knows both the male and the female because she must give birth to both the male and the female, and she has to nurture them into what? Perfection. Stage by stage, is that right? Now I'm going to reveal a secret to most of you who are visitors for the first time or second time um, that most uh, theologians don't teach this. The trouble that we are having in relationships on this planet has to do with trouble that was in the germ of life in the very beginning. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, you look at the planets, look at every object that has come out of the first creation. It is not a perfect zero. It is not perfectly round. He says it's an ellipse. So everything that circles, circles in our galaxy, in our Milky Way galaxy of stars, in an elliptical movement. It is not perfect. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it's going to have to take someone to come along (laughs) to perfect that circle. So at random, we say 360 degrees make a circle. Okay, now, If the circle is not perfected, then we perhaps have not reached the 360 degrees, but we're working on it, right? (laughs) He said the shape of our heads and our faces is not perfectly round. If you look at the moon, the moon is a sphere, mm -hmm, satellite of our Earth. And we can never, when we say full moon, it's not really fully round because there's a part of the moon that we never see, which is called the dark side. The dark side of the moon. So 
everything, brothers and sisters, I want you to take me to task on it. Yes. That ahead. we can prove ahead, every single word yes. that we represent to you yes. from the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and we are reciting as students yes. the assignment that we were given. And each one of you, when you step in the door of the mosque or the temple or the study guide, wherever you go, you have been chosen as part mm, of the work of a scientist. That's right. And you have training courses in the Nation of Islam, women and men, to bring out that God that is hidden in you. And perhaps one of you in Delaware or in Camden, New Jersey or Philadelphia or Washington, D.C. or back on the West Coast has produced a child a new generation from you that will be able to master the perfection of the zero. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that one day down the time of uh, the line of time that we will produce scientists who will be able, are you ready for this? To make a new sun, S-U-N, and make a whole new galaxy outside of the galaxy of the Milky Way galaxy of stars. You never read in any of the magazines and the newspapers when they're reporting on Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam or those black Muslims or Brother uh, Farrakhan. Uh, always what do they print? Negativity. You know why? That's their nature. They cannot help it. They were born on the bad side. We have to say. They're like the dark side of the moon that wants to keep hiding its backside. Never coming out with the truth. He does not have it in him because his father, who came up with this idea, all right, of producing that which was giving us trouble Go ahead, Go ahead, cannot teach the truth. Go ahead, they mix the truth with falsehood, right. lies, deception. Yes. So that when you see it, you say, hmm, that sounds like it's right. But it really is from a vibratory low uh, expression. Yes. And trick, that's right. Trick that. Some people here, come on up here and teach, brother. <laughs> Elijah Muhammad said that one day down the time of uh, the line of time that we will produce scientists who will be able, are you ready for this? To make a new sun, S-U-N, and make a whole new galaxy outside of the galaxy of the Milky Way galaxy of stars. You never read in any of the magazines and the newspapers when they're reporting on Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam or those black Muslims or Brother uh, Farrakhan. Uh, always, what do they print? Negativity. You know why? That's their nature. They cannot help it. They were born on the bad side, we have to say. <laughs> They're like the dark side of the moon that wants to keep hiding its backside. <laughs> Never coming out with the truth. He does not have it in him because his father, who came up with this idea, all right, of producing that which was giving us trouble, cannot teach the truth. They mix the truth with falsehood, lies, deception, so that when you see it, you say, hmm, that sounds like it's right. But it really is from a vibratory low uh, expression. And trick, that's right, trick not. Some people here, come on up here and cheese, brother. <laughs> So, 
as we continue this study, this is a course of study that we have entered into the mosque. We are not supposed to be so emotional with our teaching that all we do is say things off the cup without some real, very serious research, okay? And so as we evolve and as we grow with the guidance of our spiritual guides and through the guidance of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, we will be more and more evolutionary in what we have to say. We will be right in tune with what the scientists are discovering and bringing into view as evidence that is proving the divine teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, I did say we were going to read this first verse. Yes, ma'am. And if I read this first verse, then we're going to take from there another look, an examination of our subject. El Fatir, the originator. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Praise be to Allah, the originator of the heavens and the earth, the maker of the angels, messengers flying on wings two and three and four. He increases in creation what he pleases. Surely, Allah is possessor of power over all things. Now, what might be the thoughts that come to your mind about these winged creatures or these winged messengers or these winged angels that are flying? Think about that. Two, three, and four. Some of the interpretation states, perhaps, they don't know, that these two, three, four may be referring to prayer. Mm. And because in the traditional form of prayer, when we're doing salat, there are two, three, and four rakas. And when you say your prayers diligently and invoke the name of Allah, he takes you on wings, mental, spiritual wings, so that you are in flight and you literally can travel. They call it astral traveling or out of the body. And some of us here have had that experience where you're lifted up from the plane of your material being and you literally are flying from one part of the planet or universe to another. And then when we get back, we're amazed. But if you start talking like that <laughs> to your neighbor <laughs> or even to your family members, they're going to think you're going off the track and you must be a space being <laughs> until they have the same experience. So what is that all about? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad answered a part of this through his teachings. He said, angels, which is the other side of this uh, study, are human beings. They are identified even as messengers. So when you see a messenger, you are also seeing an angel that was appointed by God to take the people to another level from material to spiritual, you see? Yeah. So that with your mind, you have all of the self-empowerment equipment that talks back to the body. So in your brain, you have a hookup system electrically and mechanically uh, devised that connects to every part of the body and it produces its voluntary or involuntary movement to keep this vessel alive. Is that right? Yes. Once you're brain dead, you're gone. Right. Unless you have made preparation for your exodus. Yes. <laughs> At the time that they say you are pronounced dead. And those persons who have mastered that kind of preparation are generally called masters. Am I right? Yes. 
and they are called in some spiritual schools of thought, ascended masters. Then you go on to another level and they say that on that level, you, if you survive, that you can communicate with other human beings. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I'm telling you, I'm going to speak science and you can challenge me. He said, the physical body that we see will decay, go back into the earth. And we've never read anything in our history that says that once you go to the grave, that you can return. We teach it all wrong in the theologies of various religions. They say there is a life after death. There is a life after death, but we bring it into reality. He said that if there are any angels flying around with wings, they are the righteous minds that are affecting change upon other human beings. And he said, just as a proof, thought never dies. So we have to ask, well, where does this thought go? Is it engendered back into flesh? Because I don't know any zone out there that's talking back and forth to itself, and then we're picking it up and hearing all of these voices <laughs> that are being produced by thoughts in some ethereal plane. But you know, you've heard of psychics. People who can literally see into the future. They are visionaries. They are seers. What are they doing that with? What part of the body? The mind. They're able to tap in to your thinking. We call it telepathy. We call it tuning in. So the ability of the mind over matter is real. And if you take an atom and reduce it to its fundamental parts, it turns into negative and positive electricity. And everything about material things are made up of atoms, everything. Now we used to think that the atom was the smallest part, but now science is saying that the material within the atom can be divided and you find more and more little parts. And these little parts are frequencies that come from a living universe. And these particles now are going into what they call quantum, quantum mechanics, where Einstein left off with his theory, mm -hmm, E equals MC squared. So if E equals MC squared, that is talking about the velo velocity of light, which is in every single atom. And that atom produces then a friction. And if it's used wisely, we can harness energy from the atom, which is a big discussion today, for energy, for peace, for all of the positive things. But in the hands of the wrong man, it is used for destruction. And that's what we're looking at today. The controversy over nuclear plants and nuclear uh, facilities, the capability of producing a bomb, that is not in the mind of the original people, at least at the moment. But it has been demonstrated that the Western powers, all they do is study how they can make something out of steel to kill somebody. And that goes back to about 6,600 years yes, yes. in the past. So when you read your Bible, it contains mm, the King James Version, not the Catholic Bible, but the one that we read contains how many books? 66. So as we use in our teaching from the master mathematics, we can prove everything through the use of mathematics, which is what the scientists use, which what the astronomers use to prove all things. Is that right? And every single day that we wake up, 
you hear some new discovery, right? Yes. Now they've sent a probe into one of our planets, which is Platoon or Pluto. Now they're trying to see if there's anything beyond Pluto. What might exist beyond the realm of that light of our solar system generating something new in creation outside of our nine planets and the sun. Hi, salam alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All praise is due to Allah alone, the Lord of all the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful. And we, the black people in America, will never be able to thank Almighty God Allah enough for His sending and raising in our midst a divine leader, teacher, guide, and the exalted Christ that the world has been looking for in the person of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank both Allah and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for raising in our midst our brother, Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is standing in the position and standing in the place of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for a brief period of time. Let me explain what I mean. We came out tonight to hear the words of our leader and teacher, Minister Louis Farrakhan. And the subject that he's going to be dealing with tonight is a continuation of Sunday's lecture on domestic violence. Many of us here in this auditorium this evening have perhaps been the victim of some kind of domestic violence, whether it be on the women's side or whether it be on our brother's side, this issue is one of the most important issues that is facing all of us here in America today. This morning when I awakened, I had this verse that came to me very, very strongly from the Holy Quran. And it was the tree of Zakam. Now the tree of Zakam is mentioned in the Holy Quran. It is mentioned in the 37th surah entitled, Those Ranging in Ranks. And when it speaks of the tree of Zakam, it speaks of a tree that grows in the bottom of hell. And that this tree that grows in the bottom of hell produces, as it were, the heads of serpents. Now, where do we get a comparison or a parallel to this tree of Zakam in the Bible? We read in Genesis in the second chapter that there was a garden called the Garden of Eden. And the first domestic violence that we have in our record of history of the last 4,000 or 6,000 years took place in the Garden of Eden. That act of violence was performed by what we call Satan or the serpent. Is that right? The serpent was attached to a tree. And God had already warned both Adam and Eve in the garden not to partake of a particular tree in the garden that contained the knowledge of good and evil. But they were told that they could eat freely of all of the other herbs and the plants and the fruit of the trees in the garden. So what has happened, brothers and sisters, whether we look at it from the Holy Quran or whether we look at this story from the Bible, 
We are the victims of a 6,000 year history that began with Satan and the tempting of the woman and then the fall of man until today we have come to the actual brink of total annihilation and destruction. Not only are we facing a domestic violence in our homes and in the streets, but we should ask the question, what are the circumstances and the conditions that are, that are irritating and agitating this condition even more? If you look out around you today, we are breathing an atmosphere that is so polluted that within the next decade or the few years that are left of this 20th century, we will lose a large percentage of our people due to the pollutions of the air that we are breathing. That's right. We will also lose a large proportion of our people because they do not know the proper foods to eat. We will lose a large proportion of our people because the waters are polluted. The drinking water is polluted. The water that we buy that we think is purified in the bottles. They are now telling us that that water could be more polluted than the water that's coming out of the taps. Now look at the recent story in the White House. A group of specialists, doctors, are trying to examine what could be the causes that has produced this strain extraordinaire, not only with the president and his wife, but his dog. How about that? <laughs> his dog is supposed to have lupus. Right. Okay. So they're all debilitated and actually falling apart because they believe that the source of this virus or strain that has affected the White House and the president, his wife, and their dog has to do with the drinking water. Now, who is it, brothers and sisters, who has taught us how to eat to live? I ask a question. Elijah Muhammad. Who is it, brothers and sisters, that taught us the proper foods to eat? Who taught us how to raise and respect our women? And who is it, brothers and sisters, that taught us to be family again? To love one another and to respect one another and to come together in unity. Have we obeyed him? And what is the result? We are suffering the consequences that we have wrought by our disobedience and our disrespect of that great man who was among us for more than 40 years. And now, brothers and sisters, we are repeating history again because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad prayed that if Minister Louis Farrakhan ever went back, that means back out of the, the nation of Islam or was found other than himself, that he prayed that almighty God Allah would go after him himself and bring him back. Is this what we have seen taking place? Is not Minister Louis Farrakhan standing on the post that almighty Allah appointed for him? And how are we treating the leadership of the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? Did you know, brothers and sisters, that during these last 13, 14 years, he has been gradually losing the strength to be able to physically deal with the enormous amount of traveling that he has done throughout America to try to awaken our poor brothers and sisters. And he says, I'm not an entertainer. He says, I'm not out there for a big show. He says, I go and I get thousands and thousands of people. Yeah, that's right, brother minister. Go ahead, teach us, brother minister. But when it comes to putting those principles into action, then we all fail. So all... So all of the viruses that are out here and 
in here, okay? All of the evil that is spread near and far, if we are not careful, we will fall victim to this devil's civilization, no matter if we're dressed in a white dress or in blue jeans. Do you understand? The subtleties of Satan are so great that the manifestation of the hypocrites and the disbelievers is going on among us. And we cannot judge a person just by looking at the way they dress. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad set the record straight. He said, whether you wear a long white dress or a short dress, Allah is not looking at how you are dressed, but he is looking into your heart. And then he pointed out in 1974 in his last Savior's Day address that there were angels that were with him. And when he pointed them out, he said they are here to see whether or not you are a believer at heart. So now going back to where I began, Surah 37, the tree of Zaklam, producing foul serpent heads. It says in the footnote of Malana Muhammad Ali that these leaves were like a pungent, undesirable, foul, filthy tasting food that Allah describes that would be the food of the hypocrites and the disbelievers in hell. Brothers and sisters, where are we? Are we catching hell? Yes, ma'am. What, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to just remain on the outside? of this house, the only sign of light, the only sign of life, the only sign of divine unity. We need your help, brothers, not just to come, to sit, to listen to a lecture, to say, yes, that's wonderful, and then go back outside and join the masses of our people that are dying out there in the streets. But we have to pick up the role of responsibility and we have to quicken the pace so that we also become helpers in the cause of Islam. Because you are Muslims, brothers, whether you know it or not. You were born in the very nature of an humble and submissive person to the will of Almighty God Allah. If it were not so, we could not have endured slavery for now 436 years. Now, we are the warriors of Muhammad, and we must take the proper stand because this government is going to be shaken to its knees. And as it is being shaken to its knees, they are going to try to come after us with everything that they have got to try to destroy us. They are going to try to get us in the water. They're going to try to get us in the food. They are putting things out there in the environment to help and aid in the pollution that is going on. And finally, as I close, those ranging in ranks contains, if you count the English letters, exactly 19 letters. And this number 19 has entered into the judgment of the world. That number one there represents the power of Almighty God Allah. And standing beside a nine represents that he is about to destroy an old world. And when you resolve 19, you come back to unit again. Is that right? He's about to knock out a whole world. And those nine also represent the planets. And he is calling upon the powers of the universe to help him to fight in this battle against this beast. You want to know how we know it? What is the United States government planning in 1992 with their space program at NASA? They're, they are getting ready to make another probe into the planet Mars. But not just going up to Mars to take pictures like the Vikings 1 and the Viking 2 in 1976. They are going up there to settle down to take and evacuate their people out of the planet Earth, they think, because their scientists have said that they have polluted 
and destroy the planet. And they're looking for a big nuclear holocaust. And they want to save some of their people and get up to the planet Mars. They're calling the project terraform or formation, meaning to bring back the green to the planet, which is going to cost billions and billions of dollars. But remember, the sign of the end of the devil and their rule is that they would reach out. God would allow them to peep into the heavens. But as they peep into the heavens, they would be followed by flames of fire. Now, what would these flames of fire have to do with Mars? What is Mars called according to their Western terminology? It is called the red planet. It is called the planet of war. Is that right? And they've got two satellite moons going around them. I believe one of them is called Phoebe and the other one, that's it. And it means terror (laughs) and fear. So that means, brothers and sisters, that our Savior Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, in case you didn't know, he had already made contact with life, human beings on the Mars, and had tapped in to the language of the people on Mars. He had photographed the people on Mars way before Viking 1 and Viking 2 landed on its surface in 1976. Why did he want us to know that he had made contact with the people on Mars? Because he said in this final confrontation against the enemy that he was calling on the planet and the civilizations on the other planets to aid him in this final battle against our enemy. So when you see Bush, NASA and the scientists keep shooting up their satellites and keep on these little secret missions probing into outer space, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said they're trying to get a landing base on the moon or on one of our nearby planets so that they can shoot back at the arsenal of what they believe is their destiny to come into a battle in the skies, and I'm referring to the mother's plane, the UFO phenomenon, which is the top secret of the United States government. And since 1976, they have been working secretly in the investigation of what they call alien civilizations in outer space. But they're just now telling us through the media of what they are planning to do. So let us wake up, brothers and sisters. We have a savior in our midst. And Minister Louis Farrakhan is receiving direct guidance from Master Farad Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to get us safely through the treacherous road that lies ahead. I hope and pray Allah that you have listened carefully to the words and the information that I have shared with you this afternoon and that you are ready to hear our beloved minister, Louis Farrakhan, who is very nearly going to join us here in this auditorium. Thank you very, very much for your attention. May Allah bless you and keep you in your strength, peace of mind, and contentment. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the best prayer that we can pray is that Allah will keep us in our right mind because the things that are coming down on this planet in our communities, in our cities, is going to be so horrifying. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that in the Holy Quran, it says that it would turn children gray-headed. And we are seeing children gray-headed right now. So brothers and sisters, Islam and this message that is coming from Mosque Miriam, from Minister Louis Farrakhan and all of his assistant ministers and helpers and laborers is for our salvation. Please, please keep up your attendance and come and be the helpers in this great cause. May Allah bless you and thank you for your attention. As-salamu alaykum. So, going back to the Savior, why did he come and disappear? Yes, he was persecuted. Yes, he had to take flight. All of that is true. That's authentically sound, authentically true. But if he were to remain longer and his identity were to be made known, we would be found worshipping at his feet. 
He did not want us to worship his flesh. He came as a perfect emanation of the Spirit of God in his person, having more knowledge of divine than anyone who had been born before him. He was born with a light from the almighty creator in the beginning of the heavens and earth. And in the searching of his soul, he saw what went wrong. And he came to correct what went on in the darkness of space. Where it says that God, or man, was made in haste, says the Lord of the Lord. Remember, it's very difficult to come from nothing into something. Somewhere along the line, the fractal mathematics may not be 100% correct. And if the fractal mathematics is not conceived in a perfect form, then you will have a lopsided way of coming out of darkness into the world, into the light. But the woman, here we go, was there when God was making himself up out of nothing, but something was there. Okay? And the honorable Elijah Muhammad puts it this way. He said a brother sitting at the dinner table and asked him to give him a, a historical track on the origin of the woman. He said, when was the woman made? Because, you know, we have the moon history, right? And it says that the cycle yeah. of the woman is compared to the moon having lost her water. But this man, my brother, asked young Elijah Muhammad, said, as far back as the man goes, she was there. Then he asked again, he said, but I mean, is there some kind of pathological way that you can affix to her birth? And he repeated again, he said, as far back as the man goes, she was there. So in the poem that I wrote for last evening's performance, I had those words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in my mind that inspired me to write that particular poem. So if the woman was there, we have to go a little bit deeper. Now, the space is called what? A womb. That means that in the womb is darkness, but yet something of matter or electricity is there. But we don't have the brain power to calculate on how to put all of that material together to produce a form. So we have to study some of these. We have to know the atom. We have to know electricity. We have to study science to make our religion real. We can no longer remain on a theological time frame, nor interpret scripture the way that we have been interpreted. If you don't bring science into your religion, Newsweek, science, science, science. So, they have a quote here from Einstein. Everybody knows Mr. Einstein? Albert Einstein. He had groundbreaking theories of relativity, uh, reject Newton's carefully ordered universe, and he quote, Science, this is Einstein. Science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. Now these are scientists that we would think that are, are studying physics and quantum physics, pulsars, and astronomy, but they're looking for what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has been teaching us. That's, right. That's what the magicians did under Pharaoh. They said when Moses defeated them in their arguments, he defeated the magicians, right? right. They threw down, right. and he won the argument. Then they said he called his uh, Haman or somebody, right? He called Haman, his scientists, and he said, build me a uh, tower so that I can take a peek into the heavens and see if this God that yeah. Moses is talking about exists. So what is happening today? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, 
that Almighty God Allah is allowing the present civilization and their scientists to probe out into outer space so that they can take a peek into the heavens. Right. And every time that they take a peek, they come back with something. Right. They come back confirming the teachings of the Honorable right. Elijah Muhammad. Yes. Right. They come back. Yes. Telling us that, uh-oh, we heard through our radio astronomy some beeps out there. Yes. And they say, oh, there must be extraterrestrials. Extraterrestrials. Well, we don't use that kind of language. That's right. In Islam, as taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, everything is real. That's right. There is a base of a civilization that may not be exactly like ours, but we never call them extraterrestrials. They are a civilization on Mars. There is, I should say. Civilization on Mars, and why are they probing around Mars after they heard the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say that for 44 years? Then broke into the mosque in Detroit and stole all our literature right. in the early 30s. That's right. Stole all the pictures of this great wheel in a wheel, Ezekiel's wheel. Right. So I don't want our visitors to take Islam teaching from the mosques of Islam, of the nation of Islam. Don't take it just for foolishness. This is a teaching to save all of our lives. We were like you, visiting the Mosque of Islam. Yeah. And that truth tickled our ear. Because we had never heard that kind of wisdom being taught before, whether among black people or any other people. It is a wisdom, believe me, that the Caucasian or America in particular and the world in general has been studying our assignment right. that was given to us to advance themselves in the right. knowledge of atoms and how they work. Yes. The explosion down to the tiniest little quark or beyond. Is that oh, right? right? But we put these lessons, supreme wisdom, behind our back. Right. We say, oh, we don't do that. That was for them. And then in the current article of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, he mentions how the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told them that one day they will say his teachings was for them. Right. Not them. Not them. Isn't that something? So as we walk with the wise man, it's not very easy. Because he takes us in ways that we don't understand. But he takes us in the best ways. That's right. But these ways have to be studied and understood that when you are dealing with a wise man, there are many, many, many things that you will never understand. But our obedience is being called. Because he's trying to take you not to himself. He's trying to take you to a deeper understanding of the God that controls and rules our lives. So through his example and the way that he goes, he's getting us into high ground. Remember the movie um, Deep Impact? Yeah. They had to run and get into high ground yeah. to avoid this mana 100 feet tidal wave from immersing the land. They had to take high ground. Yeah. We have to take high ground right. with the wise men. Everything that we see that's happening to this planet is a consequence of the wickedness that has been practiced on this planet right. for thousands and thousands of years. Nothing is spooky. That's right. That's right. Even when it is written that this angel of the seven angels in the book of Revelation, uh, they drop a star called Wormwood. Right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden the fish died and blood That's was right. on the land. And then another angel caused uh, hornets and other kind of insects to come, locusts, etc to come and eat up the grain, eat up the fruit, and maybe eat up people right. in a minute. That's right. That's right. We have all this going on. Heat so intense that has never been registered before in the history. Now they're talking just again this morning about La Nina. After El Nino wrecked terror, now here comes La Nina. So we have the masculine and the feminine side of Almighty God of oh, rage against the wicked and the rich. Yes. 
atmosphere of the Pacific Ocean were rising so high to heat and devastating America and many parts of the world with unheard of floods, yeah, wow. rains, yeah. disasters. Then, right behind El Nino, La Nina cools the water down. Yeah. Okay. Cools the water down, but the result is going to be intensity of droughts. That's right. Intensity of destroying the bed bath or uh, food baskets of America. Right. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad again said that there was going to come a great famine. And everybody said, ooh, a great famine, but America looks so well off. She is the land of plenty, right? She has everything. But now the prices will start going up on produce that we cannot afford to buy. So then he brought us manna from heaven. He said, eat that little post called the Navy Bean. The Navy Bean is our survival kit. And if we can take that bean and master how it is to be made, uh, the best source of protein for us on this sacred journey, getting to the other side. I've heard many people say, I'm tired of being food. I can't eat beans soup anymore. Okay? And remember, the Israelites started murmuring again. They said, Moses, we're dissatisfied. We want some lentils. We want some leeks. We want some onions. We want, you know, all of these things. And he was trying to get them to survive off of their people. So we have many, many, many problems to work on. We can come to the mosque. We can come to the church. We can go anywhere we want for wisdom. But as long as we contend ourselves, with lip service and not putting that into practice, yes. then we're falling short of our duty, whether we're Christian, Muslims, or Jews. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Brothers and sisters, how do you feel? Fire. After this past Sunday, in fact, the entire weekend of three days, the mighty announcement that was made really to the world about the overwhelming event is continuing into this very moment and into this very hour. I know that it is literally impossible to be able to comprehend the dimensions of what we are going through at this very hour in the history of the world. But I want to say to you that we, the nation of Islam, of all the Muslims in the world, are the foremost group that have been chosen by Almighty God Allah to become the leaders of the new world order of Islam. And what Minister Farrakhan spoke about this past Sunday is just the beginning of the peeling away of the cover of a knowledge that is going to transform the world. I brought my Oli Quran with me to share with you something that I found was extremely, extremely vital, extremely important. As a matter of fact, I put a key in the middle of the surah that was revealed to us this past Sunday, Surah 9. Because one of our brothers, who is really a Christian minister from Arlington, Texas, near Fort Worth, Dallas, came up to me the next day after that meeting and said, Sister, I want to give you this key because I heard the message. Those of you who were there remembered that I said the number nine was over the tent. And then I went to verse 19 to show that it is not important what we wear on the outside, but it is important what we wear inside of our hearts inside of our souls because if we are not dressed up on the inside 
it doesn't matter what we wear on the outside because it will not cover the disease that is in our hearts. So he gave me this key, brothers and sisters, and he said, I want to give this to you. It is room 919. <laughs> he said, I heard the message, and he said, when I go back, he said, I will continue to share some of the vital information that you shared with us on that Sunday afternoon. Now I want to say something about the work of Minister Louis Farrakhan Muhammad Ali, whatever name you want to call him, as the Holy Quran says of Almighty God Allah. You may call him by whatever name that you wish, but he is a mighty one in our midst. And just as we are being uncovered, God is uncovering him to not only the Muslims, but to Muslims all around the world. I witnessed yesterday in a certain part of this city, an area probably that we didn't give any attention to, that they would be interested in coming and hearing Minister Farrakhan Muhammad speak. This came from a youth who is of Indian origin from India or Pakistan, I don't know which country. But when she saw Brother Minister Farrakhan, she turned, she walked up to him, and she said, Oh, this is one of the happiest moments in my life. She said, I wanted to hear you speak on this past Sunday, but I didn't know where. She said, I called to a mosque, and they told me they didn't know anything about it. And she said, you must let us know all over the city when you speak, because we want to hear what you have to say to all the Muslims all over the world. And so, my brothers and sisters, we are the lucky ones. We are the ones who have been given this brother through the prayer of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I want to end what I have to share with you by saying this, that through the three days of this event, Allah, Almighty God Allah, showed me our brother in another light. It is in the light of this beautiful image or beautiful picture that God for some reason did not want me to share on that particular day. And I sort of am hesitant of sharing it with you now. But because the next four month period of purification is so critical, I want to point out to you that when you look at Minister Louis Farrakhan, I want you to just picture what the book says about the angels and what the angels would do. How at the very end of the time that they would stand up, is that right? And they would be guiding and directing and putting the people into their various ranks before what? the coming of Almighty God Allah. It is the work of the angels to link the people up with God. So I want to close by telling you that I opened to the book of Daniel because when it came to me, I really didn't know exactly if it was a particular character, a particular name, or if it was just this image. Wouldn't you say that Minister Louis Farrakhan is an angel? And I'm not talking spooky. Angels don't have wings. They are men. And is it too far-fetched for us to believe that we could be counted among the angels? To be counted among the saints of God? Not to be self-righteous, but to grow closer and closer to Almighty God Allah. Please listen as I close. In the book of Daniel, chapter 12, that closes out the book, just after it says that the Messiah would be cut off for a certain period of time, and then a great tribulation period would come, it says, and at that time of the great tribulation shall Michael stand up, the great prince who standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered.
everyone that shall be found written in the book. What did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say about our brother? Follow this brother and he will carry you, what? Across the river of what? A great tribulation period. And when he gets you on the other side, he will not say, look what I have done. He will say, look what God has done for you and I. So brothers and sisters, please take these words to heart. And when our brother comes forward, see him as he is a man. But know that God dwells in man and God dwells in us. And this is the end of a spook civilization. Ay salam alaykum. <laughs>